our next MP complete problem we're going to talk about is going to be called independent set. Step one to looking at the independent set problem is understand what the hell an independent set is. Here, our independent set is a subset of the vertices of a graph such that if two things are in the independent set, then they are not connected by an edge. So one independent set would be V1. V1 is in fact not connected to anything else in the independent set. Duh. Let's look at some more interesting ones. Let's say I looked at V2, V4. Notice that they are not connected by an edge. There is this path to them, but all I care about is there is there a direct edge between them. So there's not here. Can we find a bigger one? Let's say we looked at V1, V6, V3, V8. So I need to check, is V1 connected to V3? No. Is V1 connected to V6? No. Is V6 connected to V3? No. Is V6 connected to V8? No. Is V1 connected to V8? No. Is V3 connected to any of them? No. Is V8 connected to any of them? No. So it seems like it's an independent set. Let's modify it slightly. Let's keep V1 and V6, we like those guys. But we're going to add in V4 and V7. And now, oh no, this is not an independent set because there's this edge V4, V7. So let's add that in, because V4, V7. I guess we can make this in a more mathematical way. Let's say it's V4, V7 is in the set of edges. So this is what an independent set is. The natural question might be, what is the largest independent set? Alternatively, a easier decision problem is, is there an independent set of a fixed size? So let's scroll down. Here's our independent set problem. It says given a graph and an integer, does it have an independent set of that size? So up here, if, the, if we were asked, does it have an independent set of size four? The answer would be yes. And then if it was a more complicated problem, we might actually have to return that independent set, which is the set here. So let's first prove that it is in NP. Here we have a proof that it's in NP. A lot of these proofs for MP are gonna be very simple. Just check the answer. So a solution, you should always start things like this. Say what a solution is. A solution to the independent set problem is a subset V prime. That is what a solution is. And if we need to define what the sizes are so we can prove that our algorithm for determining whether or not the solution is correct is in fact polynomial. So step one, if, they give, if you give me a set V prime, I gotta make sure it's the right size. Duh, that takes big O of K. And for each pair of vertices in the independent set, I need to check that they aren't in the edges. This is a very bad algorithm I've written here because I'm just gonna say, check every single pair of vertices. There's at most ON squared. I don't care how many there actually are, but there's definitely less than the complete graph. And I could check every single edge, which takes M. So it's an O of MN squared. That's all I care about. That's a polynomial. It could have been an O of MN to the five billion. I don't care, it's polynomial. So. I didn't need to write any code here. If your algorithm is complicated enough, maybe you need to write code to prove that it is actually an NP. It's just a straightforward problem. Check that they aren't connected. It's obviously in polynomial time. There's not a sort of exponential explosion, which is what would cause it to not happen in polynomial time. So if it's NP, we wanna show it's NP complete. Let's figure out how we can do that. Well, we only know of two problems that are NP complete. We've only shown that sat and three sat are MP complete. So we're going to need to reduce one of those to this problem. The easier of the two seems like it's three sat just because it's an easier problem. So maybe we try to do that. Here, we're going to try to prove that it is NP complete by reducing any MP complete problem to independent set. So the one we're gonna choose is the three sat problem, which I have here in case we forgot what it was. A three sat problem is given a Boolean expression in three CNF, can it be satisfied? So we're going to start with 3sat, do some refiguring of the problem until we can write it in terms of independent set. So our input, or the beginning of our proof is going to say, let this thing be an instance of 3sat. So an instance of 3sat is a Boolean expression in 3cnf that is saying this is our 3sat problem. What we need to do is rewrite the problem, reduce it to a graph, and be asking the question, does that graph have an independent set of a certain size? 
So, we're going to show this with an example, but we have an algorithm here on the side as well. So, we have our Boolean expression. What we're going to do is we're going to make a graph by drawing a vertex for every single literal that appears in the graph. So all nine of them. And then we are going to connect each literal, like x1, with all of the literals that are in the same clause. So let's highlight this so we can see what we're doing. The creating of the vertices, we're going to do in green, which we've already done over here. Let's just create these things. So just to totally emphasize what we're doing, we're going to keep our color coding consistent here. So we create all these vertices. Then we're going to connect each literal in with the other two in the clause, which I'm going to do in purple. So I need to connect x1 with x3 bar. I need to connect x3 bar with x4 bar, x4. And then connect x4 to x1. Let's do the same thing in all of them. So we connect, 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 connect. So let's see if we can find an independent set here. So how are we going to use this graph to represent our independent set and our 3CNF expression in the same way? What we're going to do is say if we select a vertex for our independent set, we're assigning that variable to be true. So let's check without looking at three that I have over there. I can't cover it up because I don't have enough uh, webcam, but let's ignore three. But let's see what happens without doing any more steps. One valid independent set would be x1, x3, x1 bar. However, that is not a valid truth assignment because that would require that x1 and x1 bar are both true. Therefore, I need to do some more work. Our more work we're going to do is going to be, we're going to connect each literal with its negation. So x1 must connect with x1 bar. x3 bar must connect with x3 and must connect with x3. x4 must connect with x4 bar. x2 bar must connect with x2. x3 must connect with x3 bar. Already done it. x4 bar must connect. x1 must. x2 must. x3 must. So we did, we did all of them. So now, let's check if that previous assignment works. If I chose x1, I can't choose x1 bar because it's connected. So, once I choose x1, I am now forbidden from choosing this. So let's find an independent set here. x1 is independent of x2 bar, is independent of x3. So an independent set could be, let's box them in over here, x1, x3, x2 bar. Let's verify this. There, This does not connect. This does not connect. And this does not connect. This doesn't. This doesn't. This doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't. So it is an independent set. Notice that this shows me that x4 is a free variable because I only needed to find a independent set of size 3 to prove that this was true. So let's formalize what we just said. We're going to let n be the number of variables. So that's the number of vertices in our graph. And let m be the number of clauses in the graph, what we're going to do is say that phi can be satisfied if and only if this graph has an independent set of size m, the number of clauses. Because each clause is connected to itself and I cannot assign a variable to more than one truth assignment because of these cross edges that I've added. Therefore, if I can find m things that do not connect to each other, that means I have m unique assignments of these variables so I can satisfy all of the clauses. And this graph can be constructed in polynomial time. We just loop over all of the expression there a couple of times and we can easily construct it in polynomial time. So by doing this graph construction, we rewrite a problem, which was a Boolean satisfiability problem, in terms of this new graph theory problem, the independent set problem, and three set can be reduced to independent set. Therefore, if I can solve independent set, I can sol solve three set, which means I can solve set, and we can repeat this process. So, so far, we've showed set reduces to three set, reduces to independent set. We'll slowly add to this list of things we can reduce into other things. But it's worth noting that because these are all MP complete, I could also reduce three set to sat, and independent set to sat, an independent set to three sat, and you can do any possible reduction because they're all MP complete. They all reduce to each other, 
which is a bit of a strange thing, but uh, it is the nature of these NP complete problems, that they all can be rewritten in terms of each other. And we'll just be working down the chain, and then all the backwards connections would work, assuming that the previous all the problems are NP complete. For our final thing, I want you to draw this graph and determine a truth assignment that satisfies the expression. So please take your time and try and do this. I will upload a solution to this for you, but this is going to be something I want you to do on your own. Draw the graph, like what we just did up here, and determine a truth assignment either via the graph or via this expression here. It's worth noting that this, this idea of reducing three set to the independent set actually does not go the other way. I couldn't just reverse this construction and get a sufficient three CNF problem because the number of edges might not actually reasonably align with a three CNF expression. So this is a one way reduction. Not all of our reductions will be one way. Some of them will work both directions because of the nature of the problem. So make sure you construct this graph and determine a valid truth assignment for that expression. Please do that.